So this is Leanne's first time at MPW. What are you thinking? How oh do you like God. it? I am overwhelmed. I did not know what I was missing. And last night we had the opportunity to see all the young ladies and their career aspirations. And I heard the two call outs to be the director of NASA and that was Awesome. Oh, yeah, that's right. How cool I forgot is about that. that, that girl and we girl love girl. rocket scientists, so that's yeah. just great. Yeah. And so I want to say hashtag girl power. I think that's just, you know, what we should be doing. That's fabulous. So you're kind of a space baby. Um, I am. Why do you call yourself that? So my mom and dad met uh, in our Michou factory down in New Orleans, Louisiana, um, where we were building the Saturn V rocket. And then they went when you say we, Boeing, you're a we, Boeing but I am Boeing second generation, exactly. Yes. Um, and then they moved over to Kennedy Space Center as you know the Apollo program continued to evolve. And I was born right outside Kennedy uh, Space Center. And my whole life has been Boeing. What's really exciting, and I was on the phone with my dad the other day, I was down there because today in the very factory my folks met in, we're building the largest rocket that's going to take us to Mars. And how ironic is that? that is so amazing. I called Dad and I said, he said, what are you up to? I said, I've been down in New Orleans. And he goes, what are you doing down there? I said, Daddy, we're building the largest rocket. We're going to, and we're was going to Mars. Reaction? He's like, really? He goes, that's really cool. So that was great. And that's going to be a manned? Um, well, it'll start Mars. out, you know, they'll be. start unmanned. Yeah, it'll start, everything, you know, we progress, similar to what we did decades ago. We'll progress through unmanned um, to manned man being men and women, so we're very, yeah. we're very. We have very... to come up with a new word for that. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Leanne actually came up with a word about, um, you had Marilyn Houston here, who you're very friendly with, but yeah, you're also she's a competitor, awesome. but you call it, what do you call it? Coopetition. Coopetition the between the defense folks. It is, yeah. the defense industry is really tight-knit. Uh, you saw Secretary Wilson on the stage yesterday. She's absolutely fabulous. Um, but because we are a tight-knit industry, one also that is very much focused on the men and women who fight and serve and protect all of us, we compete, but we cooperate. And we cooperate more than we compete. Because we, you're working on the same projects. A lot of times we're working on the same projects, and we know how hard this business is. Yeah. Was it hard for you? Um, you've kind of like rose, you rose up the ladder. Um, you told me you were surprised that you got this job. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't see it coming. It's amazing what other people see in you before you see it in yourself. Um, and I have, I'm almost 30 years with the company now and have had a wide array of roles from profit and loss to being the CFO on the defense side of the business. But literally the day that they, um, our chairman and CEO, Dennis Molenberg, asked for me to take the role, I, I was taken back. You thought, he, you thought he was going to fire you. I really did. It was one of those moments <laughs> where we're having a meeting. Now, you all know what I mean. You're having a meeting. It's kind of unexpected. Um, the head of um, our HR, Human Resources, with her, Heidi Capozzi, she's absolutely fabulous. Um, and she's patting me on the arm saying, it's all going to be great. And I am thinking to myself, and they're shutting the door. I'm like, <laughs> Uh, so it was, he just Who's looked, had an experience I mean, like that, where you thought you were like, like bad news was coming, <laughs> but it was really good news, right? I, I think one of the things that um, I love about uh, women in leadership is we are used to having good days and we're used to having bad days, but it's all about how we start out the next day. It's always about the day after and how you make sure you handle it right the next time. So Boeing is this interesting company that you have the commercial side, which yes. is all of our airplanes that we fly on, and then you run the defense, the defense and side. space. Um, and defense and space has actually gotten more important since 9-11. Explain the dynamics of the company post 9-11. Well, one of the uh, very, very uh, historical, you'll see averages that show that as a nation and as a world is thriving and there's less fear, you know, or just world economies, uh, you'll see commercial airline travel increase. And with commercial airline travel increasing, you see uh, more airline sales. When you see that there's more, uh, let's say, crises or threats in the environment, traditionally what you've seen is that part of the business have a cycle effect, and on the defense side, you see an upturn. And so uh, 20 years ago, the company decided uh, to make certain that we could write out any of those cycles. And from a workforce perspective, that's really important because we can move people between our defense and our commercial side of the business because of all those great technology. Yeah. Now, in most recent years, 
because we are operating in such a global environment, you don't see that historical trend, you don't see that cycle effect, especially on our commercial side. It continues to grow, and as we're entering new markets such as China and others, yeah. You see that, but it was really one of the key elements of the strategy in terms of making certain that we have, were a company that could continue to endure over the long haul. And I have to give credit to our leaders at the time. Uh, we're entering our second century right now. We just celebrated our 100th anniversary Congratulations. last year, so that's, it's that's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, and you're also at the, uh, like all, a lot of these aerospace companies at the cutting edge of innovation. Um, I interviewed your CIO, I was telling you this. Uh, we're, let's talk about autonomous yes. um, vehicles and in space and so on. So I was, I was interviewing him um, about, uh, about technology and, um, and I said, so I, let me get this right. So we're gonna have airliners that, have, um, that are flown by themselves, right? Autonomous vehicles, autonomous. so to speak. And I said, but there'll be a pilot there kind of watching things, right? And he said, <laughs> that's one scenario. <laughs> well, Mary said it, I think, um, brilliantly yesterday as she was talking about uh, cars, autonomous cars. Yeah. This technology is not new. We have been evolving it. It's specifically on the defense side. So I'll share with you a, a story. A few years back, a mom called me, literally called me out of the blue, to thank us for building helicopters. And her son had been um, severely injured in a um, IED incident um, where he needed to be medevaced out and then brought back to the US. She called me to say thank you for my son coming home for Christmas. She said, I want to thank you and your team for what you do. My son came home for Christmas because of what you do. Where autonomy really strikes at the heart on the defense side is any time that we don't have to put a man, man or woman in harm's way, that's what we want to do. And you all have seen the progress on the robotics in terms of uh, little vehicles that go in and check whether um, there is a potential threat in a, in a potential building. Right. You've seen it with vehicles. Um, Mary was sharing that yesterday. And you see the drone technology and larger aircraft. And as we were talking about, Optionally manned, yeah. Uh, where optionally you can, manned is what we're calling manned, it now. Where yeah. you can have uh, someone in the seat or not, um, and this is this is a great way to make certain that our you know those men and women on the front line have every chance to come home. Please um, raise your hands if you have a question, because I'm going to get, get you. I'm going to ask one more question before we while the mic gets to you. You seem to think that we're just going to be traveling to the moon for vacation and then on to Mars. I like, do. Okay. You want to go with me? Oh, fun. <laughs> now, I have to tell I you. There's not so, much there at the no, moon. No. There aren't like nice beaches. Or, so I have to tell you, I probably, you know, the moon would be easier than Mars because it takes you so long to get to Mars and back. You, you know, it depends on how old we are. How long would it take us time. to get to Mars? I can't remember the exact statistic. It's a couple of, it's a couple of years. years yeah. yeah, it takes a bit. It takes a bit of time. <laughs> so you have to be really paid up on your, you know, your mortgage. You got to have things like kind of worked out before you leave. It's not just, oh, I'll just email yeah. them. It'll be fine. I'd love that. <laughs> Question. Ta share, share who you are. Oh, uh, Jenny Johnson and Franklin Templeton. Um, so on your question or your description of the commercial business versus national security and defense. How do you balance as a public company expanding in markets where perhaps some of that technology can't be, you're, you're fearful of it being disclosed? So as you said, you can switch people between the commercial airline business and the defense side, right. and you move into places like China and others. How do you balance that? Well, there are clearly some areas from a national security perspective that from a defense perspective, we're not going to move into those markets. I have not been to China um, with my clearance, security clearances and all that is involved in the world I live in. That's not a that's not a possibility. But we will work with the State Department, and as those countries reach out and ask for technology, there is a thorough review and examination, and what's uh, decided then to be released, and that's what we call it releasability. Now, in terms of basic technology, such as autonomy, um, or let's say uh, cyber and digital analytics, there is a lot of progress that's been made over the years on the defense side of the business where we can take those learnings and apply it to the commercial space. And so that's how we really look at it, is where are those opportunities to take some of those core technologies and expand? Questions? So, so talk, about, talk about more cyber um, and what your concerns are on that front. 
so it was really interesting. Uh, we, uh, you know, we are constantly being surveyed, surveyed, and we understand that. And I think as a population, surveyed. we are surveilled. Surveilled. Sur and well, we may be surveyed too. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> surveilled. Um, and uh, we recognize that there's a significant, there are threat environments that we need to be um, understanding, and how we work, depending on what defense industry, what, what defense company you're in, how you partner with the government on that. So we have uh, uh, analysts who can help look at data. Uh, we also look at applications for satellites in terms of what some of those, how do we make certain that we have resilience so that if somebody were to try to take out something on our side, right. uh, there is redundant technology available so that those data continue to be provided to the U.S. government. Um, but what we want to make certain of is we understand what those threats are and we want to understand where those um, openings are where people could come in and place whatever it is at yes. risk so that we can block and protect. Describe the, in terms of national security, describe the satellite landscape. So many people don't realize that our great phones that we all use that, you know, cue us up, tell us where to go, all the different things. It's all being done via satellites. Right. Um, and there was a great panel last week with the National Space Council that Vice President Pence chaired where they actually talked about having the resilience and how much of our technology and all of our daily world revolves around satellite capabilities. Which is kind of Scary on one level, yeah. It is if you, as, if as you, well as if, exactly. But you have to know, that goes back to that threat environment. Right. How do we make certain that there is the right resilience and redundancy out there so that it's protected yeah. um, and it's understood? And that's what we want. We want assured space. And do we, do you feel like we have it? I mean, the, the, the concern that's always raised is China in space. Uh, rules of engagement, and you heard Secretary Wilson make mention about having rules of engagement, whether it is uh, dealing with uh, North Korea or any other uh, complex situation. Same thing with rules um, in space. Leanne, this has been a fabulous conversation. One last piece of advice to this crowd on leadership as you've moved up the Boeing ladder? I was told uh, once that I smile too much uh, that I laughed too much, that I seemed to have just too much fun to be in management. You do. I mean, it's like I was shocked when I met and, you. <laughs> and, and I have to share, as I sit here today, I think I'm going to laugh. I think it's pretty good. Don't lose who you are. I mean, I think that's what makes us all so, that's what makes us all so special, and it's what makes our business so incredible, is we bring um, a uniqueness, and we don't want to lose that uniqueness. And you are truly dynamic. What a personality. Well, you're Thank sweet. You so much. It's so lovely to meet you.